Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. I'm Peter Martin. It's Wednesday. Thank you for joining us on the programme and supporting PLZ Soccer on the YouTube channel. In the studio tonight, Alan Ruff, Tom McManus and Barry Ferguson are here. We're going to talk all the football on offer in the Premiership tonight and look back at the Edinburgh Derby. Yeah, lots to discuss. Uh, we'll start with the Edinburgh Derby. Um, I'll kick you off on this, Tam. Uh, I was there, I watched it. I've never watched so much rubbish in all my life. The two teams were absolutely abysmal. I mean, it was an embarrassment to football at times. The first half was terrible. I mean, oh. there was zero chances in goal, not a lot of great play. Yeah. Hearts had a couple of chances. A couple, a couple of chances. Uh, but it's a typical, you know, I played in a lot of the games. It's, it's always 100 mile an hour until the game settled down. I was so disappointed in Hibs, to be honest with you. you know, and I, I'm on the show and I always try and give them praise whenever I can, but they were terrible last night. Yeah. It was a shocking performance by Hibs. They looked as if they just had to turn up <coughs> and beat Hearts. And in Derby games, whether it's Edinburgh Derby, Old Firm Derbys, anything, form goes out the window. You know, you go, you go, you go to turn up, you win your battles. And then you go and win the game. Hibs were terrible. They were yeah. insipid last night. Very poor. And, and you know, over the piece, uh, Barry, Hearts did deserve their win. They started to play the better football. They looked dangerous on the counter-attack as well. Uh, and they got their just rewards with all three goals. Bazanich's was an absolute peach as well. But, <clears throat> you know, this for me is... You know, what we've been talking about, I, I said I couldn't see them getting relegated. It just needed a spark. And this is the second one that's come their way in the, the space of, what, the last week or two? Yep, I was, I was worried uh, for them after the first Rangers um, result that they got. You think that was going to kick them on. It didn't. The, the result against Rangers at the weekend, finally the pennies dropped for them. Um, they've went to their closest rivals, as Tam says there, a derby game. It's difficult to play in and get a result, but overall, Hearts certainly deserved um, their, their three points. Um, and they've shown a bit of character, which has probably been missing. Yeah, uh, that's uh, two games in a row, and Daniel Stendhal, the manager, wants three in a row. Only one game in a league, and uh, we have ten, ten games left, and um, yeah, we need to do it again on Saturday, again next week. Uh, but uh, it's good for our confidence that we know we can do it two times in a row and I hope we can show it we can three times in a row the same do. Yeah, it's all about, you know, getting a good result again at the weekend, Ruffy, for Hearts. Uh, the Hibs manager got slightly miffed with me when I said to him it seemed as if Hearts were more up for getting the result. He thought I was being disrespectful to the Hibs players by suggesting that they wouldn't be up for it. You know, uh, some managers, you know, start talking yeah, no, a lot I, of nonsense. I, they I, weren't up for it. I they thought, were beaten to every ball. I thought some of them weren't up for it when the first goal went in. You know, and it is a setback in a derby game. If you lose the first goal, you've got to sort of readjust. But there was certainly four or five of them just couldn't get a hold of it. And obviously when the second one went in, it got even worse. A lot of them went into their shell. Uh, but no, I don't think we can take it in the way for hearts. I think on the night, you know, they were the better side. Yeah, Mark McNulty, lucky man to stay in the park. Can I just suggest to you right now, if this had <clears> happened <throat> in an old firm game, we'd be calling for a government investigation. Yeah. We'd have it splashed all over the back pages. <laughs> Mark McNulty would have to get into the witness protection scheme. But somehow it's, oh, Mark just stepped on Sean Clare. It'll be OK. He might <laughs> he, pick up a yellow. He's very lucky. He's, I think he'll get done anyway. He's yeah. going to get a three-game ban, I think. I think there's no doubt about it for me. He could have put his foot anywhere, um, but he's, he's, he's stamped on him. You know, it's, it's plain and simple. No time for that, no place for that at all in football. I think he'll get his ban. And uh, he was lucky to stay in the pitch. I think the ref... I, I can't believe the referee missed it, to be honest. Yeah. It was in the linesman. It was literally... 20 feet away from both of them and, uh, and both of them missed it. It's just ridiculous refereeing and officiating again. Yeah, I wonder what bearing this uh, match uh, will have on the cup game coming up. Certainly uh, Jack Ross is looking to the cup game to try and put things right from last night. But also in the aftermath of that type of result, you'll probably be told you're really poor. Um, 
where the truth is they're not and they've shown that in recent times so it's just reminding them of that and what they've got is an opportunity on Saturday right away to, to win a game again and put part of that right and then in terms of this fixture and isolation and what it means to people um, we've got a chance in a big game to do that in five or six weeks time so there's a couple of things for us to take stock on um, but there's some things to be better at well, I know from time to time on social media, Tam, you do take pelters. Um, you're not the bravest of lads with the social media. Usually you run away and hide in a darkened room in case it gets heated. But uh, are you going to apologise to the Hearts fans now? Because last week you said they were going down. This week have you changed your mind? I, I don't know. Listen, they're, they're only a point above the bottom. I, get, I was getting pelters for the Hearts fans last night. I, I did actually say a, a couple of months ago that it was the worst Hearts team I'd ever seen. Yeah. Um, I think now they're, they're starting to get their act together, you know, I, I'd probably rephrase that now, but <laughs> I, listen, they're a point above Hamilton, yeah. you know, I wouldn't get the bunting out to it just with, yet, they're with not, a game they're not safe yet, with a game in hand, but bottom six, you know, I've been in that bottom six when it splits, yeah. six pointers all over the place, you know, big, big games down there, and uh, they're certainly not safe yet, but they looked good last night, fair play to them. Yeah, absolutely. God, did you see him? That was through gritted teeth, by the way. I'm amazed <laughs> we actually got it out of him. Uh, Ruffy, for me, um, I've always maintained hearts are, are going to stay up. I think they're good enough to stay up, whether it's the playoff or whether they manage to scrape above, uh, mm. you know, second bottom place. I think they'll get out of it. What's your take on it? Yeah, I think so. I think that they've shown over the last couple of games... Uh, you know that they can raise their game. Uh, there are quality players in there if they all turn up, and that seems to be the case in the last two. I, I, I like Tam. You know, when it goes into the the bottom six, I do think they're better than most of the bottom six teams, uh, and I would like to think they would pick up more points. I still think Ross County will get drawn into this. You know, and uh, keep seeing that. I know. He is desperate for me going a bad run. Have you got something against it, Ross County? No, it's a nightmare journey. <laughs> 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 oh, okay, uh, we'll wait and see how it all, all, all plays out. But uh, let's move on to something that just seems to be. I think when we look back over all the programmes, Alfredo Morelos will not be too far away from our topic of conversation. Uh, this time, Barry Ferguson, um, Stephen Gerrard says it's not Morelos FC, it's Rangers FC, and he'll ditch him if he lets them down again. This is what, uh, of course, the apology, uh, first of all, came out, but this is what uh, Stephen Gerrard had to say. It's reached a point where Alfredo needs to do it for the Rangers fans and for his own teammates who are desperate for success. This can't be Morelos FC. <coughs> this needs to be Rangers FC. And every player that represents the club needs to behave in the right way on and off the pitch. I can't make a new rule that anyone can just miss a full day's <coughs> preparation going into one of the most important games of the season. There is a big picture beyond discipline and standards at the club and everyone is united. You can't miss a full day's training just because you want to miss a full day's training. I had to do the right thing for the dressing room. I had a one-to-one -one chat with Alfredo and told him how it was. Is he in the last chance saloon for you, Barry? Yeah, it certainly sounds like that. I, I think that statement for the managers, I, I'm 100% behind that. There's standards. The manager sets his standards and if a player doesn't abide by them, then he's got to be punished. And I think Stephen Gerrard done the right thing on Saturday, um, leaving them totally out of the squad. Um, you can't pick and choose when you want to turn up for training, Peter. They pay him a lot of money. He is a very good player, don't get us wrong. He's a big player for Rangers, but if the manager let him come into the squad on Saturday, then it's an open book for the players, other players to go and do the same. So for me, the manager's spot on with that decision. There seems to be a free-for-all on this one. There was wild speculation that maybe Steven Gerrard, and I reckon he did a lot of soul-searching at the weekend on yep. whether he was going to continue or not. But suddenly, you know, yet again, Morelos is at the heart of all discussions. My opinion, and I don't know how you feel about it yourself, but I think, you know, we're now watching the last, what, 10 games of Alfredo Morelos in a Rangers uh, strip. I think he'll be gone in the summer, no question. Yeah, but without this bit of uh, indiscipline from her, I think he would have went to summer anyway if a, a decent offer came in, Peter. Um, so it's not making any difference um, to my, my own opinion. And I, I think he is a player that a lot of clubs will, will fancy. Um, will this make a difference with a bit of indiscipline? No, I don't think so. I still think clubs will come and take him. So it's up to him now to go and show 
that form he showed in the first six months of the season and start getting back to doing what he does best and that score goals. Yep, and if he puts in the performances, it may well enhance the chances of a higher calibre club coming in for him. Of course, he issued the apology, whether it was too little or too late, only time will tell. This is what he had to say. Uh, Tam, you can give us your thoughts on this. I wish to apologise to the club, the manager, coaching staff, all of my teammates and the Rangers fans for disappointing them with my conduct last week. I understand that people inside and outside the club are disappointed that I let them down and it was never my intention to do so. Everyone at Rangers and the fans have given Given me so much love that I'm so grateful for and I just want to show everyone on the pitch how much Rangers means to me I mean it's just been wild speculation that even in the <clears> Dubai <throat> trip he was overweight uh, and a few fallouts with some of his teammates are just some of the rumours that were circulating um, I just think all of that is too little too late Yeah I think it is as well, I think <laughs> you've got to turn up it, it actually reminded me of Russell Latapy when he was at Hibs uh, before the Scottish Cup final against Celtic uh, I think Alec McLeish let him go uh, somewhere for a couple of days make sure he was back on the Thursday and he never turned up and Alec left him out the cup final we lost 3-0 to Celtic anyway but I think it was I think it's a point you've got to put down Alec McLeish done that for the squad you know if he had let Russell Latt <coughs> play on the Saturday then everybody would have thought he was weak so I think Gerrard was well within his rights to do that I think personally I think Morelos has shucked it I think he's shucked it at Rangers now see, see if the manager doesn't make that decision. That's a sign of weakness. Yep. It's shown clearly that the manager's the leader at the club. Yeah, just pick up on that pie. What do you mean he's chucked it? I just think he's down tools. I think he's down tools since the break. He's not looked the same player. As you said, I think he's looked a little bit heavy. He's got nowhere near the amount of goals he should be getting. He's obviously turned up late for that. I think he's, I think he's got a transfer in his head. I think something's been organised and I think he'll be away. I think he's definitely going to be leaving. I think it's a done deal. Yeah, um, Ruffy, yep. you're in the minority here, and I hate to sometimes <laughs> isolate you for, for, mm. for opinions, but you are in the minority because, quite simply, you think you know Stephen Gerrard shouldn't have taken that course of action and should have played him because the game was too big. And, and clearly, I don't, we disagree with you. Yeah, I, I don't think <clears> a, game's <throat> an, a game's enough. One game, mm. that's the punishment, a game. You know, if it's that serious a, a, a demeanour, it's, it's worth more than a game. Just as they said, I know the guys are saying it sends out the right <coughs> issue that you're not playing on the Saturday, but why should you be playing tomorrow night? You know, so do you think they... They also, they, went, they, they they also disciplined them in-house as well, so I'd imagine you get a fine, yeah. a couple of weeks' wages. And I know the way it operates. I've, been, I've uh, done a couple of things wrong. I know the way Rangers operate. Uh, just a few. <laughs> just a few. No, they, they wouldn't stand for that. There'll be a, yeah. a few weeks' wages... Find. For, for me, no player is bigger than the club. Oh. I, I, I mean, I, I, if you were the Rangers manager, Ruffy, and you weren't on this programme, I think we'd all be absolutely battering you for being a spineless manager <laughs> who's let the, the player run all over the club. I, I think you've got to no, take but a that, stance that, on that it. That statement for Stephen Gerrard should have been put out a month ago for all his demeanours before it. He's yeah. been getting away with murder and the yeah. club's been letting away with murder. No, and they've been, letting him, they've been well. letting him away with murder yeah. that's be, on the because pitch. he's scoring goals and winning games. That, that's on the pitch. It's different getting sent off. But when you don't turn up to train with your teammates or guys who have not played in the game, yeah. that's not right. What kind of message is that sending into his dressing room? Yeah. Well, what kind of message does it send out to Canberra if he's starting the game tomorrow night? Because he's been punished, he got left out on Saturday. Yeah. Well, by the way, we're second guessing tonight that he, you know, that he's going to start. You know, because there's a, there's a real there's a real chance for you know Canberra to get in there. I mean, he couldn't play against Hearts in the cup due to that he was cup tied. But nevertheless, it'll be interesting to see um, you know what team selection. I don't think there'll be any slip ups, Barry, against Hamilton. I surely know. <laughs> You've said that for the whole of 2020. No, Alan, no, no way. I, I can't see it. Listen, they need to get back to winning ways. And no disrespect, I know Hamilton are fighting for their lives, and it's going to be hard. It is. They'll come and sit behind the ball, but there's three points for Rangers. His confidence, his confidence is shattered, isn't it? Before the break, he was. Yep, Rangers three 0 four 0 Five now. Uh, I could oh. play out. I, 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 gone. I could now. play out the entire twenty nineteen Peter and Ruffy football show and things. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you right now. Yeah. I'll take one now <laughs> coming off somebody's backside in the ninety third minute. Yeah. Three uh, points. Listen, I mean that's the thing about it now. I mean the the, the the more serious issue here, guys, I think is. Any slip-ups now. I mean, the, uh, for me, the league's gone. I don't think there's any more to come. I think, to, you know, when we're just about to discuss Celtic, 
I think if they get over this hurdle tonight, it's it's one lock on the door, Tam, because Livingston's been a thorn in their side before. Absolutely. But they're waiting. I think Rangers fans are hoping more than expectation of some kind of just shaft of light of hope, and I don't think Celtic will allow it. This is this is the night where the Rangers fans will be thinking. By the way, we beat Hamilton at home. Celtic have got to go to Livingston. Celtic have not scored a goal against Livingston away from home in three games. You know, they've had a terrible record at that stadium. The Rangers fans will be thinking, by the way, Livingston can do as a turn the night and we can beat Hamilton, we're back in it. I don't think there'll be any slip-ups by Celtic. I think there'll be no complacency, uh, complacency whatsoever within the club. I don't think anybody at Celtic thinks the league's done. I think they're just going to keep grinding out wins until it's mathematically impossible. And I don't think there'll be any slip-ups. And uh, as far as the captain Scott Brown's concerned, there is no talk of revenge. <laughs> we, we want to win every single game. That's... It's not about us saying we want revenge, it's about us making sure that we've learned from our mistakes and how we can bounce back and I think we've, we've done that from the Copenhagen game into the St Johnson game. We've done that after the Livingston game, we went on a great run after that, so uh, it's about learning. As I say, people are not perfect, we're going to make mistakes here and there, but we need to make sure we don't do it consistently. <coughs> Prediction, Ruffy? Uh, I think Celtic will win that 2 nothing. Yep, I'll agree with Mr Ruff, 2 nil Celtic. Stay with it win. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, it's one. Of, <laughs> don't worry. No, no. It's one of those. This. This. I'm just going to. When we promote this, it's the gritted teeth program. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, uh, Livingston against Celtic. Just in, interestingly enough, uh, Ruffy, 26 years ago, um, Fergus McCann came in, saved Celtic, and uh, set them on a path which is. Uh, amazingly produced a first class stadium and countless honours mm -hmm. you just wonder what would have happened if he hadn't have stumped up the cash yeah there was a lot of things going on then uh, behind the scenes things that uh, it was last minute I believe uh, and he came in pounds and yeah, shut the door that's right and uh, I think initially the fans couldn't buy into him uh, I think as the years went on I think they did see what he had done for the club and uh, I think it was all very very positive yeah should there be uh, a statue outside Tam uh, Recognition of what he what he did. Just uh, I don't want him sitting oh, on a chair. Ruffy or Fergus? No, McCann. Fergus. Just oh, Fergus. Wee bonnet. <clears throat> I think it should be. I yeah. think it, what he done for Celtic has <clears throat> has been incredible. Okay, he made a lot of money himself, but he saved the club. Yeah, but he was up up front with it, transparent. Yes, this is what I'll do. This is what I'm going to take. Um, Kilmarnock against Aberdeen, um, the Dons. I wouldn't put money on anything. I just can't. I can't second guess this game. What about you? Yeah, I, I'm the same. I, I mean, in the cup game, the quarter final against St. Man, I, I did fancy St. Man, um, but Derek again proved a lot of doubters wrong. Um, it's a difficult one. I'll, I'll go for a draw in this one. Yeah, Kilmarnock two one. I'm going to go Aberdeen 2-1. Yep, OK. Um, well, Motherwell, Ross County, both of these teams seem to be trying to lose games all the time. This battle for third isn't really exciting because they're, they're losing games right, left and centre. Can I just say I know who he's going to pick here? <laughs> Absolutely. You're going for Motherwell, Ruffy? Yes, I am. I'm yeah. going for Motherwell. I don't think Ross County on the road have been uh, very good. <laughs> yeah, OK. I, 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 know, I, know. I don't know why. I don't know what's happened about Ross County. Oh. I have to say, well done to Motherwell as a football club. They put a, a brilliant little documentary out on David Turnbull and his fight back yeah. to fitness. Nice yeah. touch. Seen it. I, th I think the Motherwell media team are <coughs> the best in Scotland. I think they're magic. I love the little videos they put together. Um, I think their social media team is incredible, and uh, it was, I enjoyed the video as well. Yeah, the Turnbull. Absolutely. Well, there's, that secures the Motherwell Player of the Year dinner for Tam. Uh, <laughs> lyrically, I thought it was a wee bit over the top, to be honest with you, but I am only kidding. It was a brilliant, uh, a brilliant little documentary. Uh, St Johnson uh, are at St Mirren. <sighs> Another difficult one. I'll go St Man. St Man? Yeah. Yeah, St Man as well. Yeah. Okay, I'll go St Johnston in that one. Uh, okay, apart from anything else, what about the Scotland's League, the Nations League group? Uh, roughly, it was drawn yesterday. Czech Republic, Slovakia, and Israel, September the 4th and November the 17th. Uh, Scotland have to avoid relegation from Group B to avoid being four mm. seeds in the World Cup qualifiers. So, uh, what do you make of that group? You happy with it? I think you're relatively happy, yeah. I think some of the other groups are harder uh, yeah. in that B uh, section. It could have been difficult for us, but no, if we can get the players back and get a bit of confidence for with the games that's coming up, we might stand a chance. Well, incidentally, talking about getting players back, maybe getting one player that's just shining uh, at the moment down south. Everybody this morning is talking about Billy Gilmore and his performance, uh, man of the match performance at that for Chelsea against Liverpool to knock Jurgen Klopp's side out of 
of uh, the FA Cup and uh, we thought we'd pay our own little tribute. I've got absolute trust in Billy. Um, and I think when you watch him play, I remember when, I, when he first came in against Sheffield United and we drew, we drew the game and people sort of questioned this, this kid, he looks like a 15 year old or something. I remember individually someone saying that to me. Um, but I have no problem with him because if he's, if he's small in stature, he's huge in personality and he's also huge in talent. Two quick questions before we finish. Barry, everybody was raving about you as a youngster coming through at Rangers. Uh, this guy looks as if he is the next big thing. How impressed are you with him? Yep, um, I seen him, Peter, when he was 15. And even back then you could see the ability he had. But you also had people saying, you don't know if he's going to be big enough. <sighs> Look at him. He's down in England, he's starting, bossed that game last night. And one thing that I've been told about him is, he's got a great attitude. Stays behind after training, wants to learn, <coughs> listens. So we've got a proper star up here for the our national team. So hopefully sooner rather than later, uh, Stevie Clark will bring him in. Because I, I don't think there's any doubts that even at a young age, 18, look the way he handled that game last night, I think he would come in and take it in his stride. Would you bring him in now with maybe a place in the bench and then hopefully September, November, he's, he's, he's somebody we build the whole team around. Or would you would you wait till you know the new season? Well, he's played a number of games for Chelsea already this season, so he, he's playing in the big boys league. So I'm sure Stevie Clark, he'll bring Stevie Clark stop, bring him in. And listen, I don't know if you, you play him straight away, but certainly he is going to be a star of the future. Stevie Clark was at the game last night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, we all hope that he becomes the main man for Scotland. Uh, I think somebody tweeted uh, this morning that we're possibly in the new lineup for Scotland going to play three left backs and about six midfielders and just forget about the rest of the team um, because we've, we've got a real imbalance. If only we had strikers and a right back as well and maybe a couple of centre halves. Anyway, uh, enough about Scotland's problems. You can give us your thoughts right across our social media on Twitter, on Facebook, live and and, of course, on YouTube as well. Uh, there's a lovely feature on Stevie Chalmers, uh, the medal collection going up for auction at McTears on the 13th of this month, if you want to view that on our YouTube channel. There's still time to watch John Gagan as our podcast guest on the YouTube channel, and you can download it across all the audio platforms. And I'll leave you with this thought, which is quite simply, you've still got time to head down to the <coughs> Etihad for Man City or Real Madrid in the competition. It's just about to close. And we're giving away a car courtesy of our sponsors Arnold Clark get onto our Facebook follow the instructions and you could win yourself a fabulous Peugeot 3008 that's all I'm going to say to you it's the winning channel join the football family if you can thanks to Ruffy thanks to Tam McManus thanks to Barry Ferguson and from myself Peter Martin thanks for watching Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.